to look at a couple of objects. Huh. About once or twice. Wow. a money saver for them. They went to a company that built domes for sports arenas, auditoriums, sewage treatment plants, traditional style dome like we were just at. Uh, also that top part turns, but just like the other one, that silver part. Look at the dome door too. One big door. It's not two doors that split apart. I heard one door is cheaper than two, so they went with one door. It just slides off to the side. The whole project, the primary mirror, instead of one big piece of glass like we described over there, it's a segmented mirror. It's 91 segments like this, and this is only half coated. They'd be fully coated. And when you stand off to the side of it, like I am, you, you'll notice it's ever so slightly curved. So when they put them all together, it forms a shallow bowl, like I was talking about over there. And, uh, and these work. You know, if, if, well, 91 of these, that makes it 10 by 11 meters. That's a 36 foot wide telescope. You know, the mirror alone would cost you know, over 100 million bucks if you made it out of a single piece of glass. Very difficult, very expensive. But these work, and the way they'll do it, they'll make these things work. At the beginning of the night, they'll turn the telescope towards a tower in the back of the building. You can see on that drawing right there, some of you can see it out there on that poster. There's a tower next to the dome. It's called the alignment tower. They point the telescope at it, they shine a light down into the telescope. Hits all 91 mirrors, reflects back up. It's an artificial star, basically. Since there's 91 segments, if you get 91 separate pieces of light scattered all over the place in that, in that tower, that's not good. You don't want that. So the back of each mirror tips and tilts where you can focus these 91 segments into one. Then, you know, at the beginning of the night, the segmented mirror is working like one gigantic sheet of glass. I mean, just like your two eyes work together as one, if you think about it, 91 eyes focus together as one in this case. So come on in. This is as far as we go. It's a little bit different setup. But you, it's okay to take pictures. You can just get right under the glass here. Check it out, it's a monster of a telescope. They tune it every night. Yes, in the beginning of every night. You see the mirrors? There's no. Oh, oh there. Okay. Yeah, we're looking at the first. This doesn't look like a telescope. We're looking at that well, idea. the other one you call a tube design, this one you call a truss design. You have to see inside of it. And the, you see the turquoise truss system there above that. That's what the mirrors are. You can see the hexagon segments. They kind of blend in with the wall because they're actually reflecting the roof overhead. Yeah. But you can see them. You can see them. Yeah. Big curved thing. Yeah. Now below that, that, that truss system I was talking about, that turquoise truss, that's a that's those well let's continue that money saving theme. Those are roof trusses. I've seen those in airports hold the roof up before. Shopping malls, places like that. The structure of the telescope that that guy's climbing around in there, the structure was built by a highway bridge company from Central <laughs> Texas, which you can kind of tell. Look at the white I beams and the nuts and the bolts and all that. Uh, the foundation it's sitting on down below, see so the gray concrete donut, that is sunk into the bedrock of the mountain, just like over there. So you got the structure within a structure. Thing going on. Look at the feet of the telescope. Uh, easier to look at the ones on the left behind the ladder here. You see those those tanks with the black hoses coming out of them? You follow the hoses down, and you see where the, where the feet are. There's one behind there, one in front of us. And right in between the foundation and where the foot of the telescope is, there was eight of them total. But you'll notice there's a gap there. And, and it may be hard to see those of you on the right, but in between that gap, you see what looks like a squished inner tube. You know what I'm It's right at about chin level or chest level, whatever it might be over there. Well, those, that, that's another existing technology. Those are called air bearings. They're like inner tubes with reinforced rubber, but think of it as an inner tube that's skinny and it's filled up with air. It's only about two or three inches thick. And there's holes poked in the bottom of it. Air goes into those bags, those air bags, comes out of those holes, literally lifts the telescope up on a cushion of air. It becomes a hovercraft. And there's two wheels that stay on the foundation. And I've seen them spin this thing around completely frictionless because it's floating on air in about 30 seconds, 360 mm -hmm. degrees all the way around. It's really smooth. That's another existing technology that's been around for years. Uh, originally developed in the aircraft industry, now used all the time by companies moving heavy machinery and equipment. Uh, and, and so you get an idea how this thing moves. It spins around in a circle like a merry-go-round. And people ask me all the time, why doesn't it fall off? <laughs> well, look in the middle, you can tell. There's an axle in the middle, there. it's not going to fall off. It stays still. All right, so you got an idea how this thing moves. It spins around in a circle. Well, remember over there, I pointed out where there was a gear, and that enabled me to tilt the telescope north and south. Remember that? You see any gears in this thing? Mm -hmm. No. I mean, look up. If you tilt that thing down, you crash into the wall. It barely fits. How does this thing see something in the sky? How does it see a different thing in the sky? Well, I'll tell you one way. The dome spins around, the door opens up. It spins around, you know, it looks at a big donut in the sky there. It, it, it can see a lot of stuff, but you know, that's still limited. But, but take a look at what I'm doing. I'm making a circle in my hands. 
What if I went outside tonight and stood perfectly still for an hour and looked at stars in my hand? If I stood perfectly still, at the end of that hour, I would see different stars. Why? What moves? Yeah, Earth moves. Yeah. What happened? Yeah, the sky appears moves. Earth sent the most with the 107 inch moon. But that's okay because if you build this like the 107 inch, big mirror, freedom of movement, you're talking at least 120 million or million dollars. And they pulled it off. It opened in 1999. Uh, when it opened, it was the third largest in the world. Now it's like fifth. They're all the top. I know the top five are all of them just like a few feet of each other. Yeah, it's a different sky there. So they'll uh, they'll take about three segments out. Try the, uh, Big mirror goes to the top to the secondary mirror, and uh, which, by the way, the secondary mirror moves with the Earth's rotation. I forgot to mention that. Instead of the whole telescope moving, the only thing you see is the secondary mirror move during the night, and that's why there's so much metal up there. If you all haven't had a chance, get over here and see that. Uh, it's in a track that moves with the Earth's rotation. All right. Well, then it hits fiber optic cables, and, and it goes directly down to the basement below. That's what the spectrograph is, and it's all fed into the controller. Uh, and what, you know, here's the last thing I want to tell you that's really interesting. I told you how they apply for time, they fly in Midland El Paso, come to the lodge, stay for the week. Here they apply for time the exact same way as the other telescope, but the astronomer, they don't show up here. So how do they get their data? We email it to them. They can be anywhere. They can be in Australia. They can be in Canada. Uh, they can be you know, in Austin. They don't have to drive, they don't have to fly here, they don't have to worry about the weather. If it's cloudy or smoky one night, we'll just get it the next clear night. You know, it's guaranteed data. You take a chance over there. There's an astronomer over there that's not real happy about the conditions right now. And, you know, you take the chance, and that's just the way it is with that. Uh, but here, you know, uh, it's guaranteed data, you'll get it no matter what. And it's so efficient, they do the work for about 30 different astronomers in just one night. You just hit the list, bam, 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 bam. If it's too smoky tonight, they'll just make up for it tomorrow night. And just email it to them the next day. Get something bright in there. Here, eight billion. That's a piece of cake. You can see out about twelve billion. So, you, so you can see fainter objects. Gives brighter light. Brighter light gives you more information. Remember, think of it as a big eye looking at the sky, and uh, you're going to see more. Computer center, a uh, great little exhibit area. We're heading down. If you if you drove up, you take your. Time. They got guarantees. They all share. Time on it. But it was borrowed from a lot of different ideas. The segmented mirror was one idea. The tracking mechanism was borrowed from the Arecibo telescope in Puerto Rico. That's that big dish, that thousand foot dish that's got a tracker on the top. That's where they got that idea from. So they, I don't know if they could really patent it. You, you guys work to see it at all. You work, work with what? You, you uh, work with SEMA at all? SETI, you mean? Yeah. No. No. no that's mostly done out of Puerto Rico. Yeah. The Hobby Everly Telescope, or an international collaboration. The largest telescope in the world is a very innovative design. There's never been a telescope built like this before. So it was a, a real challenge to bring it to completion, but we managed to do that. It has a 10 meter by 11 meter primary mirror. That is, it's 10 meters wide by 11 meters tall, comprised of 91 individual segments. So the primary mirror is really 91 mirrors that work together. These create uh, an image at the top of the telescope that is corrected by a further set of four mirrors that then send the light into a fiber that takes the light down to the basement and feeds it into a spectrograph. So the Hobby Everly Telescope literally is the front end of a spectrograph. Spectroscopy uh, splits the light uh, from an astronomical object up into different colors, and detailed examination of the colors uh, can tell you uh, things like the temperature, uh, the composition of, of the gas that's emitting the light, how fast uh, the, the star or the galaxy is moving away on, towards us. So which was dedicated in 2002. Intended to help us understand how stars are made, how they change with time, how they move through space, 